running through my mind Taking me to yesterday and the love I left behind And sometimes at night when I can't sleep I wake and realize Minnesota nights and all the lights keep running through my mind Hey everybody! Larry Hall here, up in God's country, Brainerd, Minnesota. How you doing? I had to play a little music here, waiting for a few more people to get online here before we go and kick this off. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this new program, this Facebook Live. I got a lot of ideas on, on how I can do things, share things with you and everything. Tonight, what I wanted to do, since there's so many new members, and I hope a lot of them join and come on live tonight and listen to this little podcast here. I'm going to try to condense it. I've got a little uh, point and click presentation I want to do for you. Hi, Brad. Hi, uh, Mark. I see Chris is on there. Paul, uh, say hi to a few people. Hi, Joyce and Chris Pfizer, Paul, Brad, and Mark. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> great, great to have you. What I want to do tonight is you know, it's been such an incredible journey from from where uh, I first started with, if you would have told me, I know you've heard this a hundred times, if you would have told me you've been doing this five years from now, uh, I'd have said no way. And that's exactly right. You know, if I was like anybody else, you know, as a kid growing up, when we were kids, me and my brother Steve, um, you know, we would hear things like, uh, on Saturday morning, we want to go down to the river and go fishing. Or, you know, go build up, play Huck Finn or do something like that. Well, if we, if we didn't get out of the house early enough on Saturday morning, we'd hear, you know, our dad say something like, don't go anywhere. Well, we knew that meant one of two things. Clean up the yard and mow the yard or go pull weeds out of the garden. Not fun. Not something I look forward to. So if you'd have told me that my passion is gardening now, after all these years, I never believed it. But it is. It is my absolute passion. Well, let me give you a little story how this all came about. So as I grew up, you know, I tried gardening like most people. You know, I'd get a tiller and I'd till up a little spot. And then I'd plant it. And then it'd rain for two days and there'd be 8,000 weeds. I couldn't tell the difference between my radishes and all the weeds and the carrots. <clears throat> sometimes I have a little success. Sometimes I didn't. It just seemed a lot of work for the little bit of success you got. Well, this went on through my lifetime when I was married and stuff. And about five years, five, six years ago, you know, I was raising, I started, I raised my own tobacco. And I had two raised beds. I did have success with that. Eight, nine, ten feet tall. I was at that time smoking. I quit smoking here, oh, six, eight months ago now. And uh, don't do that anymore, 50 years. So smoking three packs a day. Time to quit, I think. I think I did my share. Anyway, but I did raise my own tobacco, which was great. Organic tobacco. I wish I had started it earlier. But I had success with the tobacco. I was I was really mad because tobacco prices had gone up and great. So I raised Virginia Gold Tobacco, and it, and it came out phenomenal. Matter of fact, if you go on YouTube and type in uh, uh, Larry Hall Tobacco, you'll see all my videos on how to raise it. And uh, it came out great. So anyway, I got these two raised beds with all this organic tobacco, okay? And uh, <clears throat> my dad says, are you going to put a garden in? I said, Dad, I don't have no place to do it. Well, at that time, he said, well, you know, this container gardening thing is getting big. Maybe you ought to try that. Well, I thought container gardening was, you know, throw some dirt at that time in a five-gallon bucket and throw in a couple tomato plants. Well, I soon found out there's not much success with that. So I did that, and they grew up about this high, Got wet feet, not good drainage, it's all dirt and muddy, and died. Now I'm mad. I mean, I want, you know, if I do something and I get my, want to do it, I want to do it right. So I started doing a lot of research, and, and I start finding out about these things. What are they? Earth boxes. You've seen these. Yeah, you can raise two tomatoes, and they cost about 45 bucks. I said, come on now. Well, I understood the principles then of why it worked. Because they use potting mix, which can breathe, not a potting soil, not dirt, anything like that. 
Well, I come along and I start doing a lot of research and I started and I found these two young guys, two young kids, two brothers, great. And they had what was called earth boxes. What they did is a poor man's version of the earth box. And what they did is they took two five gallon pails, see like that? And what they do, and then they would drill a hole in the, the top when they drill a hole in the middle and put a cup through and put some slits in that and then some air holes, okay? There it is. This is the top bucket, okay? The bottom bucket's just a reservoir, okay? And then they would put another hole, they put some holes, or they're drilling the holes for, see that other hole? That's for a standpipe, a PVC pipe, to put water in. And what they would do is, there's the pipe, they would set this in the top, this went through to the second, and they would fill it up until water would go out the side of the bucket, just blow up. But it was a poor man's version of the earth box. I did that and had great success. Tomato plants grew eight, nine, ten feet tall. However, at that time, I was working at Walmart nights. I worked in a produce department. I'd work from 10 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning. <clears throat> Get off work, come home, I'd check that, it'd be bone dry. I'd fill it up until water ran out. It would hold a little over a gallon of water, gallon, two gallons of And I, then I'd go home, of course, and I'd go in the house and I'd eat some. Well, then that's my bedtime, okay, in the morning. So I'd sleep and I'd get up in the afternoon, I'd go out and check it. And it was hot in the summer and big plants, it'd be bone dry again. So I'd fill it up. I'm married to this thing. I'm happy with the success I'm getting with this sub-irrigated growing. I'm really tickled about that, but I'm not happy about it. I can't go fishing or go out of town or go camping or anything because who's going to watch my garden for me? So I played around with some different ways to, to kind of uh, um, you know, water this thing. I said, come on, Larry, you, you can come up with something better than that. Well, I started looking around, and I was looking at all kinds of things at that time. I was looking at aquaponics and hydroponics and all that, but it was all you had to be married to it. You had to be there and balance pH, and, and I didn't want, I want a plant and forget system, okay? <clears throat> well, I had seen where they put the cup in that two-bucket system, and, and, and I was looking at some different things in hydroponics, and they were using... What were they using? Well, they were using this. They were using, I guess I could do it like this, nut cups, okay? <coughs> and they would put these little pebbles in there. And then they would put them on a styrofoam sheet and then put gross stuff. I thought, well, I want something uniform. What if I had one bucket instead of a two bucket system like them grow, uh, like those um, global buckets. And if I just put one bucket, just did one bucket, with the one net cup through so it can breathe and fill that with potting mix. All I have to do is submerge that um, net cup, right? So what did I do? <laughs> this is what I did. I built, this is, uh, I think I posted this in 2011 in the fall, but it was early in the spring. Right I built the very first rain gutter growth system. I hadn't even had a float on here yet, okay? There it was. I thought, <coughs> excuse me. I thought, okay, this is going to work good because it'll water it and I could maybe I could mount a float in there, which I did, and that would maintain everything. I thought, well, what, first of all, I thought, how, what am I going to use? And I thought, well, this nut cup sticks out. Well, what's long? And I thought, come on, Larry, put on your thinking cap. And I thought, well, what about rain gutters? So I ordered some of those nut cups, and then I shot right out the Menards, and I stuck it down in the rain gutter. I said, oh, man, this is going to work great. What if I just take two two-by-fours, put a rain gutter in, and put caps on, and I set the buckets right on top with that thing, and that will be my water source. I only need one bucket, and I can use different kinds of buckets. <coughs> Got a little frog going on here. Anyway, hold on one second. So I, with the float in there, I could put nine buckets on. <coughs> I could do, and I could, for about 45 bucks, I could get the float, 
the buckets at Walmart for a buck a piece. The screws, the, vi the, the rain gutters are dirt cheap. The everything. I put this whole thing together. So what did I do? Well, I built. If I can find a picture here. <coughs> Sorry about that. I've got a picture of my first ones. Here we go. I built like five or six the first year. And I put the floats in there and I hooked them up to my well water. And then I didn't have to water anymore. I'd get home from work and then walk out there and I had planted everything in them. Greens, <clears throat> tomato plants, peppers, everything. And I couldn't believe it. Stuff went wild, just incredible. And I'd sit there and <laughs> drink coffee in the morning. I'd have a chair out there. I drink coffee and look at my garden. I thought, what do I do? Except now I can enjoy it. I'd go out of town for a week on vacation or, or whatever and come back. Everything's just perfect. So here's what happened. I'm showing it to my cousins and my uncles and brothers and cat. Here's where it really went nuts. I used to listen to a guy all the time because I like canning and I do a lot of canning and stuff like that. And, and I'm in the... I like kind of like survivor, survival type stuff. I used to listen to this guy all the time. A lot of you guys are probably recognize Jack Spirico. Well, Jack had a podcast called Survival Podcast. He still does. Great program. Jack's a sharp guy. Well, J Jack talks about everything. Living off the grid, canning your own vegetables and doing all kinds of stuff. And he would cover all kinds of topics. Well, he had a Facebook group. And I posted my video that I was sharing with all my cousins and relatives and everything about this rain gutter growth system on his Facebook page. And at that time at night, I, I could work at Walmart at night. I had earbuds and I could listen to his program. He had a one-hour program, a podcast, but he had 60,000 followers. Incredible. And I'm on there listening, and out of the blue, he says, you know what? I was looking at my Facebook group today, and there's this guy from Brainerd, Minnesota, this Larry Hall, and he's got this rain gutter growth system. Man, this is one incredible. You plant it, forget it, gardening. And he put a link to my YouTube channel. Well, I had, I don't know, 100 subscribers. By morning, I had 2,000 subscribers. And all kinds of messages saying, how do I build this thing? I want one of these. And that and that's what really kicked it off. I got to thank Jack. It went viral after that. Now I've got 60-some thousand subscribers, like 7 million views. <laughs> it's gone great. It went nuts. So the evolution of, so I started, so people started building them. Well, then I started looking at a lot of different things, and I thought, and I noticed I wanted to make the buckets to be able to breathe better, okay? So I, what I did is I found, a, I, I started looking at all kinds of different things. And I looked at grow bags and everything like that. Well, at that time, I started looking at grow bags and how they breathe. I understand. Well, that started with the tree industry. Years ago, trees used to come in plastic. They put them in the, uh, these plastic containers, and they get root bound. And what happens is if you planted that tree and you didn't really straighten out those roots, after a couple years, they can actually circle themselves and strangle themselves. So they started putting them in burlap bags. Well, then the roots would go to the end, Air prune, the tips would dry off and make math, but they would circle. And people found out that way better success. Well, then along came some grow bag companies and started making grow bags specifically for that, that out of material that would last longer and hold up, which is why I handle those now. I'll get to that point. So anyway, I started telling people, well, what if you drilled holes, you would simulate the grow bags in, and here's what we did. And we would take the grow the buckets, and now what we do, a couple of different benefits. We would drill holes and we line this with landscape fabric is one way of doing it. Some people put laundry baskets and line it with and stick bags inside. Just a, but what happens is, first of all, when it rains heavy, you don't have to worry about the, the it overflow. It can drain. Second of all, you get the air pruning on uh, you get a lot, and the, the the growth rate is phenomenal. Just, I mean, 
That's just absolutely nuts. So that was the first thing I built. I built that. Why, why I had that, I had, I had like 10, 15, 20 tomato plants left over, okay? This is the next thing I came across. The kiddie pool garden, okay? I had all these extra tomato plants, and I put them in some... I'd seen these grow bags at Walmart, because right, I'm working there at night, and I read it, it says, made from recycled pot bottles. I thought, well, that's kind of like the same stuff they make the grow bags out of, and these are 50 cents a piece. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I got a couple and brought them home, put potting mix in, planted them, and then watered them, and they're growing crazy. But I thought, well, Larry, you're right back to doing... What you did before, constantly watering, you want to get away from that. Just then I look over at my daughter's. We have a, a trailer that we rent out to our, our um, daughter and stuff, next to our place. And they had one of the kiddie pools under. I thought, no. What if I took grow bags and put them in this kiddie pool and just put a little bit of water in the bottom, maybe an inch, and maintain that? Would the bottom of these grow bags they breathe, would it work like a net cup? Oh, did it ever. So I'm going nuts. I'm doing these, but you're filling them by hand. At that time, I hadn't made an automatic float assembly. So my little buddy down in down south, Sue Green. Thank you, Sue. I, it was the middle of winter. Of course, she's in southern, I think, Texas or wherever. I said, Sue, would you do me a huge favor? Would you take a rain gutter? And at that time, I said, I told her how to do it. I said, take a take a, a, a kiddie pool, and I want you to make this. Go, I want you. Uh, oh, no, wrong one here. Huh, there we go. I said, I want you to make a little box and mount a float in it. And then put this in there so it maintains about an inch of water. And then put the P-Rock above it and then make an overflow. That way there's no open water. My wife, nobody's going to scream about mosquitoes because the water, the overflow is at two inches. And the pot, the P-Rock we put in there is two and a half inches, okay? But this little float inside maintains inch, inch and a half. It worked beautiful. Well, one thing led to another and... Donnie and my partner and me come up with a UV resistant, awesome little unit called the Hybrid Rain Gutter Growth System Float Assembly. This works. We have it in three eighths and a quarter. Both you can get this on our website, Grow Back Garden Systems. We have the complete kits, the hose, UV. This is what we evolved into eventually is because instead of uh, <coughs> people wanted everything, I started making kits for everything, and you'll find this on our website. We when you want to make a rain gutter grow system kit now, you get 220 PSI UV protected line. All the connections are all push and play. No tools needed. <clears throat> so much easier. You get the holes. You get all you do is buy the rain gutter and two by fours, and you're ready to go. And some buckets. There's the complete kit. We do the same with the float assembly. So anyway, <clears throat> you talk about stuff growing. Yeah, I'll tell you all this stuff growing. Look at this stuff. That's Merle Kane. Look at the kiddie pool stuff. Is that nuts? Unbelievable. Does air pruning and growth work? Tell me about it. My corn grew like... Was a, there's another one of them. Look at this. This is nuts. Unbelievable. Now, of course, you can do this at uh, by, by simply take a kiddie pool. Put grow bags in it. At two inches, put an overflow. Put your bags in. Put your pea rock up, or white marble rock, or whatever, up to two and a half inches. And just don't block the overflow hole, okay? When you fill up water, or it rains, it's going to empty out at two inches. The rock's at two and a half. There is no open water. There's no mosquitoes. There's no algae. It works beautiful. You can do that by hand, or you can put one of my float assemblies in there, which maintains the water. Go on vacation, never have to worry about it. <coughs> so after I built that, what's next? <laughs> it's great. I tell you, it's been, it's been, I had so many people. This is what really got me. I had some very personal emails sent to me by older people, older people and handicapped people and said, Larry, 
I love your systems. I can't garden anymore because I, I, my back hurts. I'm, I'm disabled or handicapped. Can you come up with something for me? And that's when I started looking at things. And I came up with a pop bottle garden. Something they could put right on their deck. Okay? And this is where I took two liter pop bottles and made this. This video, if you go on YouTube and type in pop bottle garden, I've got over a million and a half views. It's incredible. Look, but look at this. I want to show you something. You ought to see. This stuff went nuts in here. I mean nuts. Let's see if I'm going to do that. It went totally nuts in there. I mean, peppers, Swiss chard, kohlrabi, everything. Unbelievable. All kinds of people were making these. <clears throat> Did I quit there? <laughs> no. The, this gets addicting. You know why? Because gardening's fun again now. Now it's really fun. No weeding, no watering, no backbreaking work, just enjoyment, okay? So, let me go on here. So people are make so so I built, now what did I want to build next? My um, my son, stepson, is a pastor, Lutheran pastor in Jamestown, North Dakota. And he said to me, he says, you know, can you come up with something for us for Uganda, Larry? Because it's so hot in the summer, they can't grow anything. He can't, what about put something under, so what I did is I, you can see my, if you go on YouTube and type in underground rain, go to grow stuff. I took a PVC pipe and I put it under the ground, just level with the ground, cover, drill the holes in that PVC pipe, and then put plastic over it, set the grow bags with the net cup going through the grow bag, and then put stuff around it. Did stuff grow nuts? Oh my gosh. It went crazy. And probably use so little water. Let's see if I can see uh, some of the other ones here that were that were done that way. Un unbelievable. Oh, but you want to talk about the rain gutter stuff? Look, just look at some of these. Unbelievable, the rain gutter grosser. So after I did that, then people said, well, what about mosquitoes? And I said, well, you can use mosquito dunks. Okay, here's what the deal is. Mosquito dunks is a natural occurring bacteria. Organic farmers use it all the time. It's FDA approved. It kills the mosquito larvae, not with chemicals, with a natural occurring bacteria that goes inside the, the mosquitoes and kills them. So you can use, you can get mosquito dunks everywhere. You, if you don't want to bother with the rocks, you can throw them in there if you don't mind the algae. You can just throw them in there or put them in your rain gutter, okay? Then we came up with a hybrid where we took to PVC and now we do is we mount it, put one by sixes on the side, put that, and now you can do that. Now there is no open water, okay? You can do it that way. <clears throat> then, what we came after after that was, uh, uh, I mean, here here's some some people were doing that, but they were using baskets. And then what they would do, they put the grow bags inside the basket, a hole through the grow bag, and through the bottom of this, and then into the pipe. And now they can use that, and, and that it can set the grow bags can be stable because of these, and they get them at the dollar store, a lot of people. I just wanted to go over tonight, just kind of a, you know, I am just so proud of everybody. I'm so humble, humbled by, and amazed by the people all over the world. I mean, people in Spain, Hungary, Germany, uh, everywhere doing, I mean, look at these gardens. Incredible. I'm working on some software now that I'll be able to do, and, uh, you know, we can do this uh, and share this stuff. Oh, here's here's an underground one, and look at their stuff, see? They they got a, a PVC pipe in the ground, and they line it with plastic so the, so that, so the wet bag does not wick into the ground, and then the water just runs off, and it works great. Fantastic. So anyway... That's where we, then, so what I really, a lot of people said, well, you know, my HMO and stuff can't handle, can't handle grow bags and Walmart bags, or I want something nicer. Well, then I got some, I started Donnie Taranjo from Vista, California, my partner, 
went together with us, and uh, he said, what are you going to do when you got out of Walmart? I said, I don't know. I said, he said, well, you know, you tell people to go on Amazon, and you tell people to get stuff here. Why don't you offer that stuff? And I said, you know, it takes money, Donnie. He says, I got some of that. So Donnie helped me out. Thank you, Donnie. I could not ask for a better partner. Phenomenal man. Unbelievable. Big heart. Keeps me in check. Good guy. <coughs> Thank you, Donnie. Anyway, so we started, we went to Root Pouch. And why Root Pouch? There was a lot of grow bag companies out there. But Root Pouch was the only one that had their grow bags independently tested to FDA standards. Meaning, they're almost all of them are made in China. But we want to make sure there was no lead. Nothing wrong. Everything was perfect in them. And they are. They hold up better, last longer. I have the largest selection of collars, ones with handles, ones with, uh, I handle, we do, thank, I mean, blessed. We have the largest selection of grow bags of anybody on planet Earth now. Our whole 40 by 80 commercial building here, we have a whole semi load of new bags coming here uh, the 1st of August. It's unbelievable. Even if you if you want to do stuff, if a lot of you guys do Amazon Prime, you can just go on on uh, Amazon, type in root pouch. The first 20 listings will be grow bag garden system. You can get it in two days. Our bag shipped out, which is really nice for some people that are in Hawaii or Alaska. It costs a lot for me to ship them there, but they can order them out there and get them in two days, Prime or three or whatever, but they get free shipping. So we start I, now. So what? what's my big passion now? In the last couple of years, I've worked with a lot of grow bags. Why? Because my passion is really for young people to, to have success with gardening or, or people to do it very simply, that they don't need a lot of talent to do it, or they just get... So I start taking little one-gallon grow bags. What can I raise in them? Oh, man. You talk about amazing. Let's see if I can turn this side to see. You, can see you talk about amazing. Swiss chard, broccoli, I raise huge cauliflower, pepper plants, five red bell peppers, uh, kale, Swiss chard, <laughs> every kind of lettuce and herb you can think of, unbelievable. Let me tell you something else. Look at this. This is unbelievable. This is a, I took a one gallon grow bag, set it in a little saucer, Went down to Bonnie Plants and got a little starter of butter crunch lettuce. Is that picture perfect or what? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm going to be getting into some videos later. <clears throat> some of you people want to do some of this stuff on the side. Maybe make some money and stuff like that. Do a little farmer's market or something local. I'm going to tell you some little tricks I've learned from doing this. It's unbelievable. But now the grow bags, we've got one gallon, three, five, seven, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, and 150. You want, I got 150 gallon grow bags that work phenomenal to put worms in, put just regular peat and some combos, and you can raise worms in them. Unbelievable. Or you want to put, make a complete raspberry patch, instant raspberry patch, instant blueberry patch. Instant horseradish, you don't have to worry about it running there. Mint, it ain't going to run there. I mean, a complete, one bag, the complete garden. And what's nice is, you can, it's 44 inches. You take the two by four, two, two by fours, cut them in half. It's 48 by 48, line them with plastic, and drop that bag in and put a float assembly or do it by hand. Now you can water the whole bag with just two by fours that. And you got a complete garden self-watering for one bag. That's what's so fun about this. That is what's so amazing about this kind of gardening. So there's lots more coming and I'll be doing, but I, I just wanted to try this um, live out tonight. They're uh, very nice. The gray disposal the ones are thin, but great for trying out. They are. And they last 18 to 24 months. I'll do a whole thing on grow bags. Maybe coming, here's here's one other thing I'll show you. Here's something I'm really, the last thing I really want to show you I'm really excited about. Some of you have seen my Itsy Bitsy Planter Gardens. Look at this thing. I love this. 
Well, I have to show you this. I made a trellis for my itty bitty planter. This is the larger one with a three gallon grow bag. It's got a patio tomato in it. And what I did is I took half inch PVC, run it through the line, through the pipe, all the way up, and then I used tomato clips to hold it. And boy, does it work good. Works rock solid. There you go. A trellis for the itsy bitsy planter. These itsy bitsy planters are incredible. Here's the deal and why I wanted to get into them. I'll tell you why. Let me find a, a good picture I can show you. Here's the deal. And you can do anything from raising, uh, you can do uh, microgreens, anything in here. Uh, I think that's some kind of grass. Uh, here's one, okay. It's got herbs of dill or something like that in him. Here's what's so cool about them. The Itsy Bitsy Planter. You put the pop bottle in it with soft waters. All these schools, and a lot of schools, here's what, here's one, of the, matter of fact, one of the reasons that uh, in Brooklyn, a whole school, <coughs> excuse me, a high, a high school, did the rain gutter system below the Brooklyn Bridge. If you go to my YouTube channel and type in Brooklyn Bridge rain gutter grow, you'll see it. They took and did a complete rain gutter grow system under the high school did uh, under the Brooklyn Bridge. But here's the deal. The kids are, the, these kids, so they're in school, fourth, fifth, five, fifth grade. And they build these raised gardens. They all run out with their little green shirts on and they do the raised garden. And that's great. But nobody wants to come back and water and weed and do all the hard stuff. Eh, no fun no more. That's why I wanted this our Izzy Busy Garden grow bag. You have to see this thing. Because now it's individual. Not every kid wants to do the group act. They want to do their own. They can do their own little, if you go to my website, Grow Back Garden, type in Itsy Bitsy Garden in the search, you'll see them. You got $9.99 free shipping. I got them on Amazon. $9.99 free shipping. Buy one for your grandkids. Have a blast. Here's what's nice about them. Now they have their own personal one. When you have success, success breeds success. Not the failure you have when you're younger, but now phenomenal success, and now they're going to be hooked. But I'll get into it. Anyway, have you got any questions for me here? I got time for a few questions and stuff. Um, so been on about what about thirty-five minutes. Uh, so, are the systems with the individual pots? Yeah, these little are the systems with the individual pots. The little itsy bitsies come with a grow bag. So you, all you do is put potting mix in and they're ready to go. Uh, this is so wonderful. I'd like to order some of your grow bags, but I have to have some extra cash. No problem. I'll go through the whole thing. Uh, probably next time I'll be posting. And I'll post it at different times. And some people, if you want to come on live and you can ask questions, I will post this video so you can reference it later or share it with someone, okay? Or if they're not a group member of the group, tell them to join the group so they can access it and see this, okay? I'm going to try to get this so uh, so it can be uh, uh, accessed at a later time. Somehow, maybe on my website or maybe on here where you can access any of these videos. I'm going I'm to start this rain gutter growth system university I've been talking about. Going through everything about starting with the rain gutters, potting mix, using, reusing potting mix, a different subject that you can ask me questions we can go through. Any with the worm castings. The worm castings were phenomenal. Um, if you go on my YouTube channel, I recommend a lot of you people, my husband is so kind, it is, it is so concentrated on your life, oh, man, great, fantastic. I love this people, I love you guys. Listen, I couldn't do none of this without you guys. If you had told me, like I said, I want to believe it. I mean, you guys spend your time, your effort, and your money, and you build these systems that just totally amaze me. And, and I'm just so humbled uh, to see all you people doing this. RGG from Barb Mitchell, yeah, Barb, going to be doing this. And I'll, I'll start this uh, so you can access these. Maybe I'll put a link on my website, and you just you can go there, or maybe I'll set up a separate YouTube channel. 
that you guys can just log in. And that's probably what I'll do. I'll upload these from there. Uh, and we'll see what else it says. Hi, Edith and Heather. Barb's on here. Christina, Julie, Christina, Chris, Chris. What is the grow bag university coming online? <clears throat> soon as I can put it together. And what I want to do is go through. So the same questions are not asked over and over. I know a lot of people, plenty of people. One thing I say, we have the most phenomenal people on our group page here. The most polite. I mean, sure, there's a few people that we've had to get rid of. But, I mean, for 27,000 people, as cordial and helpful as you are, I hope you keep doing it. Emulate that. Listen, not everybody. We all started at beginners once. We all knew nothing about gardening. Some of the questions might seem stupid. That's why I want to do this university rain gutter grocery store. So, okay, how do I make potting mix? There'll be a whole, I'll have a whole thing on it. Can I reuse my potting mix? We won't have to regurgitate a lot. You send them one link. I want to do this university where everything is going to be broken down by category. How do I build a rain gutter grocery store? What, what do I need? Um, can I do this? Can I run it off a rain barrel? Can I? We'll, we'll get into all those. <coughs> but what I'll do is I'm going to try to do them live too that I can get some interaction as far as questions on, okay, we're talking about uh, a grow bag. What can I raise in one gallon grow bags? It will amaze you. So you can ask me, can I raise tomatoes? You're not going to have success, okay? You'll graze some skinny, tall tomato. Three gallon for a patio type minimum. Five gallon preferred for patio type. Seven or 10, even 15, fun all the way up to 20 if you want to go. Remember, these heirloom tomatoes will go 15, 20 feet tall. Matter of fact, there's a tomato in Texas that's a mile long. Yes, a mile long along a fence line. As long, they'll keep growing like a, like a wine. Uh, or I mean a grapevine, as long as they don't freeze or get disease, they'll go, they'll go nuts. Yes, that's a fact. So, do you want this on your porch? Well, not when it's like, you're probably better off to go with a patio type tomato. Okay, Larry, what patio? Just Google patio type tomatoes. Determinate, determinate. Okay, we're going to talk about determinate, non-determinate tomatoes. Determinate, grow so tall, put out their fruit, and they're done. <coughs> what commercial growers usually use because they don't want to get their tomatoes at different times, just like an ever-bearing and a June-bearing strawberry. Strawberries that are June-bearing, put all their fruit on in June. If you're going to do a lot of jam and jellies, I recommend you raise them. Then you can harvest them all. Raise a few ever-bearing on the side because they'll keep putting on strawberries at different times and you can pull out which ones you want and eat, eat them and enjoy them. But the tomatoes are the same way between determinate and in the indeterminate. They'll keep putting it on, putting on until it freeze up or, or until they get disease or something. But we're going to talk about a lot of things, folks. Um, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this. Put your comments at the bottom. If this is something you like and something that you'd like to see, put some topics so I know which ones that most of you would like to start. If we're going to start next week or whatever with rain gutter growth system or what topics would you most be interested in that we can go over and talk and you got questions we can interact okay i'm going to upload this tell your friends come on over to the group sure appreciate everybody for logging on tonight appreciate it have a phenomenal weekend hope your gardens are all doing good thanks and god bless you all love you guys this is larry ciao